somebody's phone to ring. Jesus calling, is that what you said? Well, good morning. We're glad to have you here this morning, and we want to go to prayer at this time. And um, Brother David. Gracious Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for being in your house today to seek your word. Father, we're so, so happy that you sent us such beautiful weather. Father, we ask you to be with the ones that are here and the ones that are not here. Be with the ones that have been in the hospital and they have come home. We ask you to be with each and every one. Be with the pastor today as he brings a message that we will receive his word and apply it to our lives. We ask in your holy name. Amen. All right, we're just glad each and every one is here this morning. Anybody visiting with us for the very first time? Raise your hand. Anybody? Okay, there you are. Tell us who you are. Molly, give me the microphone. Tell us who you are, where you're from. <laughs> and you're from? Sunset. Sunset Beach. We're glad to have you. Give me my hand. Please, please come back and be with us. <laughs> We're glad you're here. Anybody else visiting? We do this to everybody, so it's all right. All right. Yes. We're glad to see you, that's for sure. All right. In the way of announcements. Anybody got anything particular they want to bring to our attention? Brother Barry. Yeah, tomorrow night, Monday night, 6.30, Baptist Men. Uh, we're going to you know, have a meal, and uh, you boys might better bring your roll aids. I'm doing the cooking. <laughs> and then other than that, uh, we just put a sign-up sheet out here for the Baptist Men's Christmas party. It'll be the 17th. It's $15 a couple. And... Uh, we just hope you guys will hurry up and sign. Well, I don't mean to rush, but the sooner you get signed up, the better we can take care of things and, and get squared away. But I really appreciate it. Have a good day, and God bless. Molly, you've recruited some new help, haven't you? Okay. Susan. Okay. Oh. Um, the shoebox packing party is coming up on Saturday, November the 12th. It's going to be at 4 p.m. Everybody is welcome that wants to help us pack. And there will be pizza for dinner. So please come out and join us if you can. Okay. Thanks. Um, we will have our first uh, Christmas play practice this evening at 5 o'clock. Um, there are still plenty of parts available. Um, we need uh, children youth, and adults. So please come out and join us. All right. Anyone else? Raise your hand. Fifteen a person, thirty a couple. No break on the couple, right? <laughs> All right. <laughs> the Carolina Opry is filled. I picked up the sheet, and most of my money is in. I think I might have a couple more, but I'm not even sure about that. But I have taken up the sheet because I have no more room, okay? All right. Anybody else? Any other announcements? Um, we are having uh, Children's Church today, ages 4 to 8, with BJ and Cal. Thank you. Me over here after the choir comes down. Also, I have talked to... Uh, uh, Sharon at uh, Jackie May. We are doing names this year for the Christmas for the, the children. Uh, she will be getting those to me hopefully uh, in the next two weeks. So I'm hoping that we can get those. But be praying about that, that uh, we can help those children out that are needy that uh, for Christmas. So uh, just be praying about that. Thank you. All right. Anybody else? All right, how about birthdays? Yes, sir. You got a birthday? Come on down. See, we do it to everybody. We don't just pick on the new ones. Any other birthdays? How old are you, Mr. Brad? 42. Great day. That's surprising to me. I, you know what I'm saying. He's grown up before our eyes. So. 
That just tells me how old I am. So, anyway. <laughs> All right. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Give it a big hand. All right. Wedding anniversary. Wedding anniversary. Anybody? Don't want to leave nobody out. All right. All right, we're going to get serious now. We're going to talk about prayer requests, and there's a lot going on, uh, a lot of death in our community uh, this week. So, um, there I just want to thank everybody. Y'all gave money to my daughter for the South African mission trip, and mostly they need prayer. They'll be leaving Thursday, and they'll be gone about 10 days. But I just thank God for every one of y'all. All right, raise your hand if you have a prayer request. Anybody? David. Give David a mic. I just want to thank everybody for the prayers for Julie. She's doing good. She's probably, she's probably watching this. Um, but uh, continue to pray for her. Um, everything's doing good. Actually, I think she's doing better than last time. Yeah, that's a good thing. She she's still recovering. She'll be homebound till the sixteenth at least. So just keep remembering. Thank you, Brody. All right. <laughs> Molly, Carol, raise your hand up high for us. There you go. Most of you know Mr. Jennings Edge. Um, we'll be having his service tomorrow at 2 o'clock at the uh, fire department in Calabash. But he's a very close friend to Albert and myself. And I know a lot of others in here. And uh, that family needs a lot of prayers because we're going to miss him. And that's Mr. Jennings Edge. I think that visitation is this evening with his wife, right? Anyway. Well, it is at White's for you to go home this evening, but I don't know what time for sure. Five o'clock comes to mind, but you better verify that before you go. Uh, anyone else? Yes, Raise sir, your hand. Uh, yes, I'd like to mention the Grissett family has really been hit hard with the flu. Uh, Amber's family had it. Tyle's family had it. Tyle is still sick with it. Uh, then last night, they took his mom and dad both to the hospital. Uh, Deanne has pneumonia. And his dad has the flu, so let's keep all the Grissett family in prayers. Also, Miss Carol Harden, everybody remembers her. She passed away yesterday. Keep all that family in prayer. From what I understand, the arrangements will be in Georgia. So let's just uh, keep a lot of folks that's under the weather. Uh, Susie's had a fever since Wednesday. It broke yesterday, so keep her in prayer, as long as many others who are struggling with illness or sickness. All right, anyone else? young pastor from Wilkes County and I haven't updated you for a while. Uh, he is in a facility. They are trying to help him. He is recovering. This is a man that was pronounced dead. They were keeping him on the team so they could donate his organs. But all of a sudden he was alive. And that's a miracle of God. And right now he's in a facility and pray for him that he continues. He, he's improving by leaps and bounds it seems like. He cannot talk yet. He's still on a ventilator, but he is going like 17 and a half hours, um, breathing on his own uh, at a time. He, um, the, the most thing now, though, is that their insurance is from week to week. They tell them on a Wednesday whether or not they've got another seven-day coverage. So just pray for them that that insurance will keep kicking in. It all revolves around how much he's improving, and he is improving. So keep praying that he that's a, a man with a young family, young children. We had prayed for an infant girl, Harper Grace, seven months ago. I guess she had the heart surgery to transplant. Uh, talked to the guy, and they were anticipating that she was going to be able to go home at the end of last week. So we just want to give God praise for that. All right. 
Um, so a close friend of mine that I work with, um, he's going through some tough times right now with family and personal. Uh, so could you please keep him in your prayer request? Absolutely. Anyone else? Mike, carry that microphone to Michael Bain on the back. Michael, if you don't mind, have to pray for us for this. Uh, all the sick and prayers that have gone up this morning. Heavenly Father, Lord, we give you thanks, Father, for this day, Lord, and the opportunity of coming to your house to worship. Lord, we just pray, Lord, for all the many prayer requests that were made, Lord. You know each and every one of them. And you know how to handle it all, Lord. Lord, so we just turn it over to you, Father, to all the ones that are bereaved, Father, and the sick. And Lord, we just give you a special thanks, Father, for your love and your mercy and your kindness. Lord, now as we go through this service, Lord, we just ask you, just lead us and guide us. All these things bring honor and glory to your name. All right, let's all stand and sing. 4.30 in the hymn book, we'll look on the screen.
joy to be back in the Lord's house. I want to say welcome to all of those who are here today and those watching us on Facebook. We appreciate your attention. And we're going to look in the wonderful scripture of Colossians chapter 2, verse 6 and 7 today. Colossians 2, 6 and 7. It's been a wonderful week. Uh, Proverbs on Wednesday nights. If you've not been coming or not been watching, uh, please come. Please watch us on Facebook if you're not able to come. But we'll be in chapter 6 coming this Wednesday night. Amen. Appreciate it. Amen. Colossians 2, verse 6 and 7 says this. As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him, established in the faith, as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Our Heavenly Father, we do ask your blessings now upon the reading of your holy and precious word and upon the message of this hour. I pray our hearts are united to receive what the Holy Spirit will lead us and guide us to accept. And Father, I pray that we'll respond in the invitation in a way that pleases and honors you. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now that trick-or-treating is over, many people are rushing right into Christmas. They're beginning to put all or up their holiday decorations. The movie channels are playing Christmas movies already. Christmas music is already being played on the radios. We're already planning our parties. In fact, you heard this afternoon, or this morning rather, we're beginning to start practicing for our Christmas programs. And, and I think about everybody here and everybody listening loves Christmas. We all love Christmas. There's only a, a one or two that I know of that don't like Christmas. But most people love Christmas. But I got to tell you all something. Thanksgiving is rapidly becoming a forgotten holiday. We are rushing from Halloween to Christmas without any thought of giving God thanks for what He has done for us. And so for the remainder of this month, every Sunday morning, we want to bring a message that gives God thanks, that honors Him, and also reminds us that we ought to be a people of thanksgiving. And so today's message is going to come out of Colossians 2, 6, and 7. And what a wonderful message it is for us to consider as the first in this series of messages on thanksgiving. So let us set our hearts and our minds to a time of thanksgiving. Go ahead and put up your decorations. Go ahead and play your music. Go ahead and watch those movies. But do not forget to be thankful what God has blessed us with. Now towards the end of this week on Friday, it's going to be a, the observance of Veterans Day. And that's a reason right there to be thankful. In fact, with all the veterans that are with us today, please stand and be recognized. And if you would, please just say what branch of service that you served in, if you will. We'll start right here on the front with Johnny. Amen. Let's give them all a hand. Up. We certainly want to take time to thank you for your service and for what you have contributed to our country. God bless each and every one. Now, what do you think of someone who thinks of thankfulness? When they have a mindset of thankfulness, this for the Lord. What do you think of that? Irma Bombeck, we all who are older remember her. She wrote 
columns and newspaper columns. And this is one of the stories she wrote. An estimated 1.5 million people are living today after bouts with breast cancer. Every time I forget to feel grateful to be among them, I hear the voice of an eight-year-old named Christina who had cancer of the nervous system. When asked what she wanted for her birthday, she thought long and hard and finally said, Oh, I don't know. I have two sticker books and a Cabbage Patch doll. I have everything. That's a thankful heart. In all that she was going through, she learned how to be thankful. In his autobiography, Breaking Barriers, syndicated communist Carl Rowan tells about a teacher who had greatly influenced his life. Rowan relates, Miss Thompson reached out from her desk drawer and pulled a piece of paper containing a quote attributed to Chicago architect Daniel Burnham. I listened intently, she read. Make no little plans. They have no magic to stir men's blood and probably themselves will not be realized. Make big plans. Aim high in hope and work. Remember that our sons and grandsons are going to do things that would stagger us. More than 30 years later, I gave a speech in which I said that Francis Thompson had given me a desperately needed belief in myself. A newspaper printed the story and someone mailed the clipping to my beloved teacher. She wrote to me after all these years and said, Carl, you have no idea what that newspaper story meant to me. For years, I have endured my brother's arguments that I had wasted my life, that I should have married and had a family. When I read that you gave me credit for helping to launch your marvelous career, I put the clipping in front of my brother. After he read it, I said, you see, I didn't really waste my life, did I? She learned to be thankful. He was thankful for a teacher, and it made a difference lifted her up and encouraged her. In our scripture today, out of Colossians 2, 6 and 7, we're going to see and be reminded of our own salvation. Not only that, we're going to be reminded how we ought to be living today. And then third, we're going to be reminded that we ought to be a thankful people. Look at verse 6 a little bit closer. As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. So look at that first phrase. As ye have therefore received. As ye have therefore received. When we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, it is a transaction that takes place immediately. And as we live out the Christian life with purpose that God has given us, we quickly realize that the Christian life it's a life of growth. It's a life of process. It takes a lifetime to live out our faith. To receive Jesus Christ is to accept Him into our hearts, to ask Him to forgive us of our sins and accept us into His family. And then after that has taken place, it is an ongoing experience. People who stop at salvation they do not realize that Jesus not only wants to be our Savior, He wants to be our Lord leading us and guiding us each and every day. Then after we have accepted Christ, as this ongoing experience takes place, we learn of Him, we grow in Him, and we grow in our faith and our love. One of the most sad and heartbreaking things to watch is a person or even a family who has received Christ, but then begin to stumble in their faith. They begin to doubt and to question God. They begin to slack off in their service to God. They quit coming to Sunday school. They start to quit coming to church. They quit reading their Bible. They quit uh, praying. They quit communicating with other Christians. And they just quit. They quit on the Lord altogether. When we accept Jesus into our hearts and our lives, 
Our love for Him ought to continue daily as we walk this Christian walk. It ought to show up in our daily lives. We ought to grow sweeter as the days go by. Yet, if we'll look around, I'm sure you can see some people who instead of growing sweeter, are growing bitter with age. They used to be sweet and loving, but because of circumstances and their failure to look at God and trust in Him, they turn on God and become bitter in their hearts. As we have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord. The next phrase. The Colossians had not merely received the teachings of Jesus. They had received Jesus Himself into their hearts as they accepted Him for the forgiveness of their sins. The title we see, Christ Jesus the Lord, is an interesting phrase. Think about this. As Christ, He is identified as the Messiah or the Anointed One. The One promised to Adam, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, prophesied by Isaiah and Jeremiah, Micah and all the prophets. As Jesus, He was given this name at His birth, which means Savior. The angel said in Matthew 1, 21, uh, these words concerning Jesus. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. As Lord, he is revealed to us as supreme and sovereign. He is our Lord. He wants to take place in our lives and direct us in our walk and our step for him. As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in Him. So walk ye in Him. And so, let's go back to Second Colossians. When Paul writes this phrase, he reminds his readers that since they have received Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, they walk by faith in His power. We don't walk in our own power. We walk in the power of Jesus Christ. In other words, to accept Jesus Christ, we have to learn to walk to Jesus. We stepped out in faith and we came to Jesus to accept what He had freely offered us through His death on Mount Calvary. Then, when we accepted Jesus by walking to Him, we start learning to walk with Him. He, is, he wants to be our companion and walk with us day by day. And you know, walking is just one step from falling. That's why we start out as a small baby on two unsteady legs and we'll see the little babies in the homes beginning to try to walk and they're unstable and, and they'll try to stand up and then make it to take a step and then they'll fall right back down. But then they'll try to get right back up. Many times they'll hold on to the coffee table or an end table to walk. And then other times we'll see mom and daddy hold them up by the hands and walk them across the floor. Sometimes we do this because we want them to grow stronger in their legs. And so we help them out for a period of time until they get the hang of walking day by day. This is similar to the walk of a Christian. We put our faith into practice one step at a time. Walking with Christ may sometimes be very frightening, but it is the only way to make progress in our spiritual growth for our Lord and Savior. Sometimes we're learning to walk in Christ and we begin to fall by the wayside. We may hit the ground, but you know what? Anyone who's ever accepted Jesus will get right back up and begin walking again. Amen? And we'll, before long, we'll grow stronger and stronger in the Lord as we continue our walk with Him. No one expects you or me to be perfect. But we all ought to strive for perfection or spiritual maturity. But there is something more I want you to see. To walk to Him is to accept Him as our Lord and Savior. To walk with Him is to have Him as our companion in our daily walk, helping us as we take step by step. But the Scripture says, so walk ye in Him, not to not with, but in Him. There is something more I want you to see here. To walk in Him is to set boundaries. 
We set boundaries by walking in Christ. How many today have ever played sports, or maybe you're here today, and you play sports? I know you play volleyball. Is that right or wrong? This is yes, and this is yes. See, I know that about you. Many of us have played football or baseball or basketball or soccer or any of these sports. They all have boundaries when you think about it. If a football player steps outside the lines that have on the sidelines, he's out of bounds. If a basketball player dribbles or throws the ball and it misses the other player and it goes out, it's out of bounds. If the baseball, when they hit that ball, it goes beyond the third or the first baseline, then it's a foul ball. It's out of bounds. And so on and on it goes with volleyball players, soccer players. And so we all see that when you play sports, you have boundaries. But we also have boundaries. If I was to say to you, let's go walking. Well, I don't put no stipulations. We, we could walk all through the building. We could walk outside. We could walk to Shalot if we wanted to. But what if I said, let's go walking in the building? I have set boundaries. I said, let's go walking in the building. I have set boundaries to where we are walking. To walk in Christ is to set boundaries. It is to walk by His standards. What the Holy Bible teaches us to walk in our daily walk. And you know what? When a sports player plays ball and he steps out of bounds, most of the time you're going to hear a referee blow a whistle indicating you're out of bounds. You're too far out. And so he is doing that to set us back to the right path and where we ought to be. We also have a referee who watches over us. When we step out of bounds, he blows his whistle. And that is the Holy Spirit. He speaks to our heart. And he says to us, you're not where you ought to be. You need to get back in bounds to what the standard of Christ is in our daily walk. Friend, this world is going to try to get you to step over the line many times over as you're walking for Christ. To get outside the boundaries that Christ would have you to walk in. But you do your best to listen to the Holy Spirit. To let Jesus lead and guide each and every one of us. So walk ye in Him. The only way to make spiritual progress is to walk in Christ through this world. Jesus wants us to continue our walk and grow stronger and live for Him every day. Now notice verse 7. Rooted and built up in Him and established in the faith as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Now rooted is a word that we normally associate with trees. We have these trees in our yards or we see trees in the parks and in groves and, and their roots many times grow deep and long all over the ground and they're embedded into the ground. They feed off the nutrients found in the ground and, and because these roots are embedded strong, when the winds and the rain comes, they're able to stay up and stay strong. Likewise, as a Christian, our roots ought to be deep in Christ. And so we receive the nutrition that Jesus wants to supply us with. And then when the storms of life and the contrary winds come, we're able to stand through all of this. When we think about being built up in Him, we think about construction. Uh, many of us have worked on homes or we've worked on construction sites. And, and Paul shows us that our foundation is built on Christ. The ground is level. No one stands higher than you or me. The ground is level, but we start building upon that level ground. Some of us build homes out of wood, hay, and stubble, which will be burned up and have nothing to show for. Some of us are building homes out of gold, silver, precious stones. And that is glorifying Christ in everything we do, giving Him the glory and honor He deserves. Listen to what it says in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 19 through 22, about being built up in Him. Ephesians 2, 19 through 22. Now therefore you are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints, and of the household of God, 
and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth into an holy temple in the Lord, in whom ye also are built together for an habitation of God through the Spirit. A cornerstone is a great big stone placed at the intersecting angles of a structure where two walls would come and meet with one another. In biblical times, buildings were often made of cut rock. And by uniting these two intersecting walls, a cornerstone would help align the whole structure and tie it together. In the same way, the chief cornerstone Jesus Christ holds us and fits us together, provides alignment for our lives. God doesn't want us to stop at conversion simply by accepting Him and not growing anymore. He wants us to continue to grow in Christ where we will be strong. We, he doesn't want to see, desire to see us as babies in the Christian life. We start out as babies, but we ought to grow in Christ and become of those who are able to partake of strong meat and live a life that is pleasing to God. The Christian life is not meant to be a one-story or a two-story building. It's meant to be a skyscraper reaching high and mighty for the glory of God. But then listen to what it says. And established in the faith as ye have been taught. As students, we must be taught the Word of God. We must desire to learn the Word of God in order to grow our faith. And that's why you hear once in a while people say it's so important to be involved in Sunday school, Wednesday night Bible studies, and Sunday morning worship hour so we can receive the Word, but more so, even personal time alone with God and His Word is important. Personal Bible study will greatly establish us in the faith Read Christian books. Listen to Christian music. And associate with Christian friends who will build you up. Too many of us have friends that simply are negative and want to bring us down. If you have a friend like that, you need to build them up. But don't let them tear you down. So let's work on that. Then it closes out by saying, Abounding therein with thanksgiving. As we receive instruction, in the Word of God, it should produce an inner joy for each and every one of us. Amen? Now, if you don't feel very thankful today, it just may be because you've taken your eyes off the Lord and put your eyes on your circumstances. Something to consider is this. A grateful person is a thankful person. Let me say that again. A grateful person is a thankful person. I've uh, always loved the story about the man who wanted to join a monastery to become a monk. He was told that one of the rules was he could not speak the whole time he was there. But after 10 years, they would bring him out to the head monk in charge and he would be allowed to speak two words. And so he agreed to the rules, joined the monastery, didn't say a word for 10 years. His 10 years anniversary come up. He was brought before the head monk in charge. He asked if he had anything to say and this is what he said. Food, bad. <laughs> After ten more years, another anniversary rolled around. He was brought out to the head monk in charge. Asked if he had anything to say and was reminded only two words now. And The monk said, bed, hard. Ten more years down the road, he comes back for his 30-year anniversary. Was brought before the head monk in charge who hesitantly asked him, do you have anything to say? Remember, only two words. And the monk said, I quit. <laughs> the head monk in charge says, well, it don't surprise me. You've done nothing but complain the whole time you've been here. Now, while that story may be amusing, there is a lot of truth to that. Some people never do anything but complain. 
There is no thankfulness in their hearts for the things that God is doing in their lives. They find fault, they criticize, they murmur, but they never lift up their eyes and hands to God to praise Him and thank Him. Consider Matthew Henry. When Matthew Henry, the great church leader of 18th century England, was robbed by a highwayman, he wrote this in his diary. Let me be thankful. First, because I was never robbed before. Second, because although they took my purse, they did not take my life. Third, because all they that took my all, it was not much. Fourth, because it was I who was robbed and not I who was robbing someone else. You might be thinking, I have nothing to be thankful for. You're looking in the wrong places. You need to look towards God and what He's done for you in your lives. As we go into this holiday season, I know everybody wants to get geared up for Christmas. But be thankful for what God has done for you. Where He's brought you from, where you are today, and where He's taken you. Let us not to forget to be thankful for God's blessings upon all of us. Our Heavenly Father, as we now consider this time of invitation, may we consider this time of altar call, a time to be thankful to You for all of the blessings You have blessed us with. As we leave this place today, may we go with a week of thankfulness. May we thank someone for something they've done in our lives or some way they've treated us that has made us feel special. But may we first and foremost give you the thanks that you deserve. So Father, as we come to this time of invitation, as your Holy Spirit lays upon our minds the things we ought to be thankful for and the people we ought to be thankful for and the God that we ought to be thankful for, may we respond in a way that pleases you. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This altar is open. Would you come? Would you? Let's all stand.
anybody have a word, a testimony, or something you might share with us? And Sister Lori wants to give a testimony, so I'm going to hand her this mic. I, I want to say I have missed my church family with all my heart and soul, so I'm happy to be here today. But Amen. my health is extremely fragile, and I this thing too just not for the weak. And I wish somebody else had it. Does anyone else want it? <laughs> they can have it. But um, this year has been hard on me. Got to the point that I gave up, and my mom knows this because I kept saying it. I was ready to go home, and I was ready to be with Daddy. Many, many times. All I kept saying is, I wanted to go see Daddy. I wanted to be with him so bad. But God wasn't ready for me to leave the earth. He wasn't ready for me to go. He wasn't finished. I don't. He wasn't finished for me yet. Amen. And I know that he got. He's got more for me to do here on this earth. And I know that I've got plans that he wants me to do. And I know that they're important. If not, then. I don't know, but God, I I read my Bible every day, and and I'm planning, and my plans are before I leave this earth is to have my have my Bible read complete, because my dad did that, Daddy did that, he he had, he read that Bible front and back many many times. And I'm not I'm not saying I'm a Christian he is because he he to me he was an astounding Christian and and I know he's got a I know he's got a mansion up there that's gold in the beyond. <laughs> I'm ready to see it. I hope he's got me a room <laughs> next to him somewhere. <laughs> but I appreciate all the prayers that has come from this church for me. And I love y'all all. And I just wanted to let you know that I appreciate everything that you have done. And and I thank everything that you have done. But I'm still going. And I'm still trucking. And Tao... <laughs> <laughs> More for tail, I'll keep him hot trot up there to, at the uh, at this town hard part because he, he keeps me going. <laughs> but I love you all, and the God's good. He's always good. He's always got me in his hands, and I know it. Amen. So thank you all, and I appreciate everything you have. And all your prayers. Amen. God bless you. Appreciate you, Lord. God bless you. Anyone else? Christmas program practice today at five children, youth, and adults. Wednesday night, got a Wanda's at six fifteen and Bible study at seven. So we'd love for you to come out and be a part of that. And have a great week, will you? Brother, you can close us in prayer. Thank you.